Hello to everyone! These video series are going to be about the preparation for my next motorcycle trip to South America. In this first episode, I'm gonna talk about the luggage. So basically, these boots, helmet, pants, clothes, all charges and cables, this air compressor, tubes and some spare parts need to go all together in this 50 liters saddlebag that I have. And with this saddlebag, I'm gonna fly to South America because I'm not gonna ride my motorcycle there. So in this video, I'm gonna tell you with more detail what exactly I will have inside. So if you have nothing to do, grab your favorite drink and stay with me. Welcome back. As I said, I'm gonna tell you everything about the luggage. What riding gear I decided to use, why? What helmet I decided to use, why? And how I plan to use this gear on my trip to South America. I will also talk about the clothes that I'm gonna need when I don't ride, when I walk around. And I will have another one back with cables, chargers, everything that I need to run my electronics, some spare parts and tools, basically everything that I need to complete this trip. The new Echelon GTX gear, it's not the typical very heavy Gore-Tex suite. It is exactly the opposite. It is very light, very comfortable to wear it, very well designed. It, it has this uh, big mesh right in the middle, so it is also very well ventilated. Also the ventilations on the pockets and two zips on, on the back. It is the same with the pants, very flexible, very light with very good ventilation. So. I prefer to have it instead of normal gear because with this Gore-Tex suite I can rely when it starts raining. Not always, not on 100% of the cases, but most of the time it will protect me well and this will eliminate the need of carrying additional rain gear in my luggage because as I said, all of this stuff that I already showed you needs to go to this 50 liters saddlebag include my helmet because all of this needs to travel with me to South America and every small piece that I can eliminate from my luggage it's like a bonus that's why my choice is going to be this Echelon GTX gear many said that it's going to be too hot for Gore-Tex suite but I'm not so sure about it because I will have many mountains to cross many high elevation peaks later in Argentina Chile Peru. So basically cold and hot days will be almost equal. I'll have enough hot and enough cold days. And uh, yes, I understand that this gear will be never perfect, but it will be bearable most of the time. And this is what I need. And as I said, just because I can eliminate the rain gear, it is already a big bonus for me. The boots will be my trusty Revit Expedition H2O boots. They survived, survived perfectly on my trip to Magadan last year. I really like them. I actually love them. Very comfortable, very good protection, uh, waterproof. And uh, yes, I understand again that they might be hot, but all of these negatives that I might have in the hot days will be both positives in the cold days. And as I said, I prefer to go with something that I know very well that it's already proven by me in a long trip. And I will go again with them, even though they are very big and bulky and will take a lot of space in my saddlebag, I'm not even sure that they will match inside, I will still go with them. I will have a set of normal light summer gloves, nothing special, I can always buy a new set of gloves if I need it. I will have also another one, scarf, very light for hot days or bonnet, whatever the name is and also a thick windstopper like this to cover all of my head if the weather is cold, especially here around the neck area. I will use my O'Neill Sierra helmet. As you can see, it has a lot of mileage. The moment probably around, I don't know, around 50,000 kilometers. It survived my trip to Magadan last year. I never cleaned it properly and I will never do it actually. Uh, it is not a perfect helmet, it's very windy, but it will do the job and uh, it will be probably its last mission, last trip. And after that, it will go on this shelf for its well-deserved retirement. The bag with the clothes is also nothing special. 
I will have this Revit mid layer, they call it mid layer, it's more like a switcher that could be used under the jacket in the cold days, but I can also use it like a normal switcher if I need to walk around and it's a little bit chilly. I will have three t-shirts for riding and walk around. They will be from cotton, not synthetic cotton materials because most of the time it's going to be hot. Uh, a microfiber towel, just small. Two sets of zip pants like this. They are very light, very light. They don't take much space in my luggage. I have two sets in the case I need to wash one so I will have something to walk around. Three sets of socks, three sets of underwear. I will have another one set of socks that are uh, completely waterproof. They are a little bit thick, bigger on size, but they are a very good option. Completely waterproof socks. In the case my boots gave up and start leaking, I will still can rely on these socks to keep my feet dry in the case I need to ride in cold days with wet feet. You know, it's not so good. I tried to find these socks, but I couldn't. It's a big mess today, a lot of stuff out, but I'm gonna find it anyway. And the reason I'm gonna have only one set of gloves, summer gloves that I show you, is because I plan to take with me uh, heated grips from Oxford, to take it with me and mount it on the motorcycle once I arrive there. Because there will be a perfect solution if I need to ride many hours in the cold areas. And I will have to do it in the south part of, of the continent. So I prefer to take the heated grips instead of um, heavy and bulky gloves. The walking shoes that I use for many years are these. As you can see, they are very light and flexible. They are made from real leather and insoles are also from real leather. So they never stinks. And I can put them in any place, any bag and uh, use them when I need it. In the same bag, clothes, I have another one, small additional bag that carries all of my toiletries. They are not so many, toothbrush, toothpaste, uh, a dry stick, uh, soap, and a few more small items, nothing special. And this bag here, there will be all chargers, cables, and everything that I need to record my trips. So I will need basically to recharge my batteries. Most of the things I will keep in my tank bag here, like the main camera, cameras, chargers and everything, but here are more like additional, like spare. So I'll have splitters like this, so in the case I need only one plug socket, I can divide it to three different. Uh, a spare microphone, a spare camera I have here in the case, one stops, uh, spotlight and a few more things like that, but they will stay in this bag. Include this 12 volt air compressor, which is a very useful gadget. I used it on my last trip many times. It works absolutely perfect and also the bottom part, the battery, could be used as a power bank in the case I need battery. In this bag I, I also have another one power bank which is like 14 milliampere hours or something like that from Anchor. Very good solution. Actually I can charge my telephone at least five times. So basically this will be all of the stuff that I need and uh, I will have also tubes from 21 and rear 17 because this is the size of the motorcycle that I'm gonna run over there. About the spare uh, parts and tools, I'm not gonna take anything with me. So I plan to buy the most important spare parts once I arrive there because it will be a motorcycle that we don't have here in Europe. So the spare parts that I need, I'm gonna buy it from Colombia once I arrive there. I also plan to buy brake levers from there. I have a set of brake levers here, but they are too big and heavy to carry it from here. So I will buy all on the local spot once I arrive there. I'm not gonna take my tent with me. It is too big, too heavy, and it is something that I will probably never use. In the case I need tent, I'm sure that I will find another solution over there. This is my uh, first aid kit. I will have inside the basic medical stuff that I need, but locally I will buy more, especially some kind of local um, antibiotics, uh, pills for diarrhea, repellents for mosquitoes. Local stuff always works better, that's why I prefer to complete the medical kit once I get there. So basically this is pretty much everything. Let's see now, can I put all of this inside? I worried about the boots, so if I can put the boots in, everything is going to be alright. Let me see what I can 
have inside like my medical kit or one set of maybe front tube they can go inside yes perfect I can I can have even more stuff inside but this will be all right this will go here like this I have a lot of space here so let me see It will work. Everything is inside. Of course, once I I'm ready with it, I will bandage it with this, you know, this stretch that they have on the airports. So I will eliminate someone with fast hands to take something from inside. But I'm very, very glad that everything went inside. How heavy it is. I don't know, but it's definitely no more than 20 kilograms, which is perfect. So this will be my main luggage. Check it in on the plane and the tank bag I will hold like a cabin luggage. So this is how I plan to travel over there. And now you can say, Pavlin, no, 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 you forgot your jacket. No, I did not. The jacket I'm going to wear because it will be December, which is mean that it will be cold. So I will wear the jacket on me. So I did not forget anything. This is everything that I plan to take with me. There might be some differences here and there. I might change some stuff inside. But as you saw already, I cannot have more than this because it's not going to fit in my 50 liter saddlebag. On next episode, I'm going to talk mostly about routes, maps and everything that I plan to take with me. The reason the maps are like this because today I split it around two liters water on them and because they are from very good quality, not real paper, something between nylon and paper, I just need to dry them and tomorrow they'll be fine. So as I said in the next episode, I'm going to talk about routes, maps and everything that I plan to take with me, how I plan to navigate myself and everything. So this might be a good reason for you to subscribe. Anyway, thank you very much for watching and see you next time. Ciao.